Amen. We got the bill today. Now, the name of this message is called The Time to Eat. The Time to Eat. Table preparation. So that means whatever God is doing in me, he's got to prepare me. God's preparation is not what you think. He doesn't prepare like we would prepare. If I was to prepare a Thanksgiving dinner for you, I would break out my best china, and I would break out my best serving dishes, and I would break out the best tablecloth, and I would get the flowers, and I would do all the things that would make it so beautiful, and God doesn't start preparing that way. When God begins to prepare you, he begins to take you from what you think is beauty and put you in a hard place, a place where there doesn't seem to be anything that will come out of this. God's, God, before God gives you a table, he must suffer you. Before you get blessed with anything, he must suffer you. If you Jesus said, if you labor with me, you will reign with me. If you ain't going to go through nothing, then you can't get nothing. And so we have a whole generation of church folks that want stuff. And, that's, and this is the reason why these naming and claiming and blabbing and grabbing and these shucksters are busting y'all head all the time, getting, giving y'all to give because it ain't just the shucksters doing it. You want an easier way. When Paul said that I may know him in the, fe in, 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 in the fellowship, of, in, in the power of his resurrection, but also in the fellowship of his suffering. That means I got to get acquainted with this suffering. Fellowship means acquaintance. I mean, we're making acquaintance. He said, I got to get acquainted with, not Christ, with his suffering. I got to know what he went through. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So nothing will ever come out, nothing good will ever come out of anybody that has not suffered. The mark of any true leader is suffering. That's why nobody wants to hear truthfully about how many cars you have and how blessed you are and how big your house is. That, okay, thank you. We're glad God did that for you. But, you know, people's ears perk up when you talk about, man, look, I survived breast cancer. And I went through one day and I thought I was going, I, was, I had a gun to my head. This is what people perk up on because I don't have in common with you your riches. What I do have is your suffering. I can relate to your pain. I, we all relate to pain, and pain is something we have in common, and this is the reason why Paul said it's better to glory in your weaknesses because people can understand. They can relate to weakness, but we keep showing our strengths, and because we keep showing our strengths, God keeps showing our weaknesses. The more you try to show you something, he's going to show you not. Why? Because in order for you really to get something from the Lord, you got to suffer a while. That's why David said, it is good that I have been afflicted. If I can teach you to go through adversity, then you will have won 75% of Christian battles. Did y'all hear what I said? 75% of Christian battles are won or lost by the perspective of going through. In other words, is this God or is it the devil? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many things we attribute to the devil are not. Are you hearing, a lot of things that happen in your life is God allowing it. See, the devil is slow. I'm serious. The Bible says, had he known that he was going to release our Savior to get in the spirit and go down and strip him of his keys and, and put his foot on his neck, the Bible says he they never crucified Christ. Satan didn't know that part. So he doesn't know everything about you. He's just going to do what he do. In other words, he's a killer. A killer will kill. They don't care there's no objective to killing. It's just to kill. He's going to do it. If you put something in front of him to kill, he'll kill it. He won't think about killing it. That's what he do. God knows he's a fool. He'll kill whatever I put in front of him. So I use him at times. That's time that I have to use him. I don't, I don't, I don't make him do it. I just put him in front of it, and he's going to do what he do. Now, by him, by him doing, by, by, by Satan trying to attack my children, it's going to strengthen them. That's why the Bible says Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. See, suffering is a great part of preparation. You will never, this is the reason why I tell people, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of young people, single people, and, you know, they talk about, you know, marriage. You know, when you always starry eyed when you ain't married and you this all, I just want to be married. And, you know, you have no idea what marriage is. You, people don't know what marriage is. Marriage is really... Uh, the road to crucifixion. Because you will never kill yourself. <laughs> but that spouse will nail you to the cross. 
There'll be stuff coming up in you. You didn't even think you had that attitude. You didn't even think. You just, oh, we just going to love each other to death. Shoot. Shoot. You'll find out how, how, how alive your flesh is. Your flesh is alive when it comes to marriage. You know? so, so marriage, so God uses. See, God has to have somebody close enough to us that we can't hide. So he can pinpoint, that person can, can, can hit buttons that nobody else can hit. That's why when you're single, you really don't know yourself all the way. Because there's some stuff in you you really don't know. That's why single folk always tell me, I don't know why they're going through that. And if I was me, and me and my husband going to live on love, God, shut up. <laughs> you don't know what that woman going through. You don't know, you, you think you got a prayer life because you love Christ. This girl praying because she don't want to kill him and the kids and herself. It's a whole different level of understanding. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I, I used to tell people, sing people, look, don't, don't, don't speak in the marriage. Be quiet. Just don't even talk about that. You don't really know. You don't know until you're in it. You have to be in it to know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A girl with one year, a one year of marriage under her belt will beat you if you ain't never been married because she knows something that you don't know. And you have to have season. It doesn't mean you can't encourage folk. It just means that don't try to be no expert. Don't be telling them, just do the word. Yeah, you know, people tell you in the heartbeat what, what the Bible says is submit to your own husband. Submit to him, girl. And then you got to love her. You, you saying that because you ain't got to do that. Why did God even write that? Why is that even in the word? Did you know I, I, saw, I saw God's mindset when I saw him say submit to your husband? That's when I saw God. That's when I really saw this is a suffering thing. That's one of, that's one of the most hardest things there is to do. It's so hard that we have, we have ministries that have grown up trying to find a way around that. Whole Greek and Hebrew teachings trying to take that part out. They don't even mention that part. But we have love your wife, Christ, love church, love your wife, Christ, love church, love your wife, Christ, love church. But we don't say nothing about that submission. See, when God began, when God wrote that, that is an indication of suffering. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, that's when I saw that God doesn't always necessarily care about my happiness. Because he knows, why would he put me in a situation where he knows it's going to rob me of my joy? <laughs> Are y'all there or not there? So you got to be real to really walk with God. You got to be honest to walk with God. No need in your fronting because you got to go home to the hell you live in. So you ain't no need in being front about it. So that showed me that God, that, 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 that marriage is preparation. Say everything, everything I, go I go through is preparation. Preparation, preparation for what? Do, you know what? do you know what you're being prepared for? Are you there? Do you know what you're being prepared for? Oh, for success, for power, for the anointing, for ministry. No, you ain't being prepared for none of that. You're being prepared for Goliath. All that stuff you're going through, little stuff, that stuff you're going through, is preparing you for the real fight of your life. There's a real fight. Peter said, think it not strange when it's, there's, there's something called a, a fiery trial. It's a strange thing. This ain't the trial. This ain't, this ain't stuff you're going through when you're living wrong. This is when you're living right. This is the trial that comes because you're living right. you really starting to be like Christ now, and this is the test that comes after this. This is that test you can't make no sense out of. Like, wait a minute now. I, I, I love you. I've been, I've been tired. I've been going to church. I've been living right. I've been praying. I've been studying the word. I've been fasting. What is this in my life? What is this cancer? What, what, what do you mean my husband left me? What is this? God, this, uh, this, was, this is a monkey wrench. This is a technical. You know, <laughs> you know, you go do something with guys. Like, wait, 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 wait. The tech. Tech, this was not part of the plan. And you say, why would God do that? Because he's more, he's more focused on your endurance. Building you up to be a soldier. But because we have, we've got this happy gospel. People are taught that it's about happiness. That's why we're so entertainment minded. Because we think it's all about me ha 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 having some type of happiness. Not saying God don't want you to be happy. 
But Paul said, I think myself happy. Paul said, there's times when I, the circumstance is not happy. But my circumstance don't predict how I'm feeling because I can just say, be happy. Be happy today. He wrote that in a prison. When, 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 when where he do do it was next to where they put the food. And it was so cold, he said, bring me a coat. And then he wrote them back and said, y'all forgot. And that's when he wrote, I thank myself happy. So circumstances is not. Now, how did Paul get to the point where he can suffer like that and still God is getting glory? You got to understand, everybody's going to have a Job moment. Come on, say my Job moment. moment. That means you're being prepared for the time when God has to tell Satan, have you considered? Have you considered my servant? Because you're getting blessed and all of a sudden things are going good and you're getting stable. And all of a sudden, uh, Satan is saying, they only serve you because of what you're doing for them. This fight ain't even with you. This is really between God and the devil. Everything is between God and Satan. God's only proving the Satan stuff. Everything God takes you through is just to prove to Satan. That's why God said, look, man, you can do what you want to do. Job, Job loved me. He's in love with me. He won't curse me. If he, it, go and do it. That's what he's preparing you for. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he chips away at us with little things. Say amen. What we would consider little. He starts working on our attitude. He starts working on how we talk to people, how we fly off the handle. He starts dealing with those things, that those pet sins, those little foxes that destroy the vine. He starts working on our integrity and our character. He starts pressing on us because he's saying, I'm trying to get you to a point where I can show, where I can use you as my champion to show Satan that people don't love me because of what I got, but they love me because of who I am. I, did y'all hear what I said? Many people only want God because of what he got, but God will always test a real heart of a Christian and begin to put you in situations and say, now, I'm, now this is gone and that's gone, now praise me. This is why you do yourself a disservice when you got to feel like praising God to give him praise. When the song got to be just right to give him praise. You do yourself a disservice every time that they say, let's praise the Lord. You ought to be the first cheerleader, shishkoom by God, because you want him to understand, God, I'll do this anywhere in the elevator. I'll do this on my job at the desk in the car. I'll do this anywhere. Why? Because I want you to understand, you ain't got to take me through nothing to get this. If you don't praise me, I'll take you through. Y'all don't want to hear that. If you don't praise me, I will take you through something. You will praise me. How you hearing what I'm saying? So many of y'all going through because you just won't give it to God on a regular basis. How you hearing what I'm saying? When you wake up in the morning, you ought to be giving it to him. Yo, you ain't going to give it to me. Okay, there's a trial coming at 3 o'clock. You're going to need me. This headache going to be so tough, you're going to call out to me. You ain't going to give it. See, something. God is a God. He, lead, he inhabits our praise. He loves, he loves our worship. So he prepares me by causing me. He wants praise on demand. Y'all there. The Bible says that there was in, in, in Revelations in chapter 4, chapter 5, there's worship going on in heaven. 24 elders are sitting on the throne. The Bible says these four beasts are at the, in front before the throne. And all of a sudden, these beasts get to say, holy, holy. All of a sudden, the Bible says that these beasts get to say, holy. The elders fall down. It's called, it's the, it's, it's the word that we, that we, the beginning of the word, hallelujah. They halal. They just, it means to bow down. They fall down. The Bible says they take their crowns off and cast them down. And they fall down before him so he can be higher. Are you, that's worship on demand. You ain't got to pump me to praise you or give it to you. You ain't got to take me through nothing to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you just because of who you are. Y'all there? All right, Psalm 23. Let me show you. Let me give you some preparation. He's preparing you. He's preparing you. Say, he's preparing me. He's preparing me. But his preparation is not what you think. It is not what you think. Sometimes people are saying, Lord, I want you to use me. I want you to use me. Then God take them through a situation where they go through some type of cancer or they go through some type of depression. And they say, well, Lord, this is not what I planned. I wanted you to use me. He said, no, I'm using you. I'm going I'm, I'm to make you usable. 
Oh, y'all ain't catching this. Um, you want me to use you? I'm going to make you you. You're not usable because you ain't been through nothing. What would you do if I was to take you to somebody you don't even, couldn't even relate? So I'm going to use you. You ready to be used? Yeah, Lord, use me. Yeah, Lord. You think about microphone ministry. You think about stand up, talk, and telling people stuff. No, he said, I'm going to use you for real. I'm going to take you through something so you can have some true revelation. Because you, you anointed in the area you went through. Your main anointing is, the, is what almost killed you. That's where you truly anointed. Because when you walk through there, you are familiar with it. You familiar, that's why you walk up to people on crack and you've been on crack. You familiar with that. Like what you talking, what you, what you, this ain't, you ain't, you ain't been boozing me. Right, you can come out of this. I'm going to show you how to get out. But God would not use folks that are not used. Remember we used to sing that song? If you can use anything, Lord. I always wondered about that song. It always bothered me because, see, I'm a realist. I learned if you pray to love folk, God going to put hateful people in your life. Pray, pray for love. God, I just want the more love. Okay, I'm going to give you some hateful people to, that you can practice love on. <laughs> what do you think? It ain't going to be no, da- like you're going to download love. No, you're going you gonna, to, he going to stretch you with hateful folk. All of a sudden, somebody is going to get hot on a job that's just nasty. You get a nasty boss. He's going to say, now, wait, 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 love now. Remember, and right when you're ready to get mad, he say, now, he's going to break about you. Remember, remember you asked me for love? Then start loving. Well, I didn't know this type. I didn't know. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whatever you want from the Lord, he must, bring, he must, he must stretch you to it. That's a better word. Look, stretch you to it. Then, mother, this is what I want. This is where I am. I know I don't have what it takes to walk in what I want. The only way I can get there is he stretched me to it. That means he starts bending me out of my ways and starts taking me beyond my comfort, putting me in places and situations that's uncomfortable for me because I will never be comfort- I will never walk in where I want to be if he don't stretch me to that place. Are you there? So you say, Lord, I just... Lord, I know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, um, a very impatient person. Never pray this. Never pray for patience. Ne- that's, that's a prayer you will regret. Don't, never pray for patience. Because the Bible, you, you praying for something he already going to do. The Bible says the patience got to have his perfect work anyway. He already going to work patience in you anyway. So don't pray that. That's a, that's a bad prayer. Because when you pray for patience, boy... He's going to put you in situations where fire, it's going to be like people, fire is going to jump out of you. Because whatever we got, listen, y'all, we have to stop thinking that God is a magic eight ball or some type of magician. He's all powerful, but he doesn't move stuff out of our way because the lesson is in this thing we got to go through. Now, y'all. If you always jump in front of your child and never let them get dealt with, you have, you have warped them. You have handicapped them to life. They will not know how to function, how to operate in real life because you've always been there. Jump. You ever seen mamas run out there fighting school bus teachers and fighting folk to, over a child? That's why these kids are so sensitive. Killing themselves over somebody throwing jokes on them. I never understood that. Why would you... What, they they bullied me on Facebook. Cut it off. Why you on, why you but how you gonna bully me in cyberspace? Man, look, click. It's over. But because we have not allowed them to have any discipline based upon they took away discipline, they know no hardships. So as soon as somebody talk about them, I'm ready to kill. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I can't take I'm ready to kill myself. You don't never, y- 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 y'all may think that's, but I, I, th- I think it's silly for us to cater to that. I think they need to be tough. I think they need to be tough. You know what, you know what taught us? We got whooped a few times. You get whooped and you'll learn to fight. That's how, that's what we got taught. You get whooped. Oh, they, they, they riding you out, guess what? Learn to throw jokes. Learn to throw jokes back. You gotta learn, you gotta, you, but you can't run home all the time for me to jump in front of what you got to go through. Because you're going to get older and somebody's going to try to whoop you. What, am I going to run out there and fight your battles for you? 
I have to let you go through that. That should deliver some of y'all right now. I got to let you go through that. And some things that you don't understand, God said, I got to let you go through that. That very thing you've been avoiding running from, you got to go through it. Are you there? Let's keep going. Go over to Psalm 23, chapter 1. I mean, 23, verse 1. Say, prepare me, Lord. Prepare me, Lord. So, so, so when God's ready to prepare us, this is, this is how he does it. This is how he does it. Now, I told you this is prophetic to some. Some it ain't. Some it's over your head. Some you don't care. Some it won't even affect you. But for those that are saying, I feel something in me. I know something's there. Something's there. There's greatness here. There's something more than what I see. It's been locked up in me a long time. Why can't I, why can't I get this thing to come out? Why can't I walk in it? Well, it's because of preparation. See, every time, see, every time the Lord begins to try to prepare you, remember I said your perception of what you're going through, you don't know that's God. So you run away from. You jump out of the fire, and the fire is there to purify you. But you run away from the fire so you're never purified. So you can never do what he's calling you to do because you're skipping preparation. Are y'all are y'all there or not there? Yeah. Say preparation. preparation. When you when when you skip preparation, God will start to deal with you through circumstance. Circumstances happen. God told Jonah, go down to Nineveh, preach to these people. Do you hear what I said, Jonah? Oh, yeah. Going down to Nineveh. He jumped on the ship. So okay, no, Jonah, I ain't tell you, I ain't tell you Jonah, but see him. Go, God, God never said nothing else to Jonah. God starts speaking through circumstances. Come on, let this storm come up. Let these men come and find, try to find out who, who is it. Who, 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 who's sinking our ship? Who's running from the Lord on this ship? Who ain't obeying God? You might have some people in your life ain't obeying God, bringing some curses on you. Who ain't obeying God? Who are you cursing not obeying God? Man said, look, man, somebody done did something. Let's find out who it is. The lot fell on him. What have you done? Jonah was smart enough to tell the truth. He'd rather die than do what God said. He'd rather die than do what God told him to do. He said, we're gone, we're gone, we're gone, we're gone, gone then. Let's go, let's go overboard. You think it's over? You think, you think you're going to suicide your way out of my will? <laughs> big fish. Come here, big fish. Prepare a place for him to get his mind right. Take him down into deep. Where he can get his mind right. God prepared this place for him. This is circumstance talking. God never said nothing else till Jonah finally said, I repent. Now go to Nineveh. You still going to do what I called you to do. You can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way. Now you're going to go through some stuff, but you can go through it or you can run away from it and still go through it over here. You'll go through over here. You'll go, uh, you go to that church you'll go through. You go to that church. It ain't the church you're going through. It's God trying to take you through something that you resist in it. Amen. I told you it's prophetic for you. He's trying to take you through something. Sometimes he uses marriage. Told you marriage is a great way. Thing he used for you. That's why you think you got the wrong spouse. <laughs> no, that's the right spouse. Amen. The wrong spouse will be fake. The wrong spouse couldn't help you because they would agree with you. <laughs> that spouse would agree with you in your weaknesses instead of point them out this is why we get so mad at our spouse because we really can't say they're lying it's true they might have said it nasty but it's true that's how you are and how you gonna lie when they wake up with you every day they know it's how you are but 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 see when we're when we're when we when we are trying to skip process of preparation we start thinking that we start trying to make our surroundings conducive to us. We only surround ourselves with agreement people. We don't want to hear nothing else. This is the reason why I try to tell people, most people are deceived because they don't want to hear true counsel. They got in their head that this is what God told them and they won't check with nobody else because they, 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 they ego is too fragile to let somebody critique it. 
when the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. So somebody should critique what you say you believe. If you don't let nobody do that, that could be deception within itself because you're, you're resisting the counsel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right, go to Psalms. Let me get in there. Let me try. I'm trying to get in this. I've been going here for three times. I'm trying to get here. Psalms 1. The Lord is, Psalms 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Say, I shall not want. This is now that this is the this 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 first part of this Psalms is like a teacher, old school teacher, with a ruler cracking your knuckles when you do the wrong thing. I said old school teacher. Now the teachers have bottles of pills. <laughs> They're gonna psychologically make you do something that you can't do on your own. Drugging these kids. That's all it is, is drugging them. You can't give them an aspirin, but you can give them something that's a narcotic almost. Y'all got to get up on this. I already said the devil was a lie when it came to my kids. The devil's a lie. You ain't, ain't nothing wrong with them. If you can't teach them, tell me. We can teach them. We know how to teach them. We, 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 ain't, we ain't stupid. We got the education. But don't be drugging mine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See I, see, I understand that because I got a nephew that, that, that went through that, and, they, and, and his mother let him get drugged, and now he's a drug addict. I was there when I told him. I said, don't do it. Don't. He was, what number? Five, five, six. I said, don't do it. I said, I'm telling you, don't put him on it. Don't do it. I said, all he needs is a good whooping. A good whooping, he'll straighten this. I said, let him stay with me. Let him stay with us. I said, I, 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 I light. I will, he's too young to tell him. Y'all light him to him. I light, I will, I light him. I said, by the time you see him again, he'll be straight as a gate. I said, but somebody got to whoop this boy. I said, this boy's swelling up like he grown. He need a, he need a beating. You know, that real beating. Just whoop him and keep him home. <laughs> but anything I can't whoop can't live with me. If you're a main child, I can't whoop you. You can't live with me. My, my dad tell you, they son sitting there, my son's know. If I can't whoop you, got to go. I ain't gonna have nobody swelling up on me in my house. Devil is a lie, because I ain't if either I'm gonna whoop you, I'm gonna kill you, either way it go. Now I ain't going to jail for that. So you got to roll. So we established that early in life. Well, we you do know we gonna whoop you. You understand whoopers. And here's the number to the people. But if you call them, you better live with them. Ain't going to be no calling no people. You call them on me, you better live as good as I am to you. And I can't whoop you when you need a whooping. The devil's lying on you. But they wouldn't whoop them, so they drugged them. They just gave him this like gateway drug. Gave him, you, you, you started him out. The Lord is my shepherd. Say, I shall not want. I shall not want. This is the ruler, the yardstick. When he begins to prepare me, he starts dealing with my out of control desires, my lust. I shall not be in want. You cannot be successful in anything as long as you have uncontrolled desires. It's okay to have desire, but uncontrolled desire is greed. That's the reason why you cannot have a good marriage and you have uncontrolled lust. You're going to destroy the marriage because the Bible says lust is never satisfied. So whenever you get, that's why you can't feed all of them word sexual behaviors because the more you feed it, the bigger it grows. It's something, y'all ever seen the old movie called The Blob? Y'all remember the movie The Blob? The, every time it ate somebody, it just got bigger. That's what lust does. So you end up pushing the person to a breaking point because they cannot fulfill all of that stuff. You got to say, no, no, no. It's not this. It's not you. It's me. I need to renew my mind about sex. I need to, y'all heard what I said. I need to renew my mind about sex because I done learned and picked up some stuff that ain't even supposed to be in this bed, in this marriage bed. Amen. Say la that. <laughs> so I shall not want. How can God, how can God use you if the devil can come and shake a wound in front of you? How can God use you if he, if, if, if he can come put muscles and chest in front of you? Amen. You didn't want. So what, so what are you going to deal with through preparation? Out of control desire. He's going to make sure I got this under control. Are y'all there? 
Number two, he making me to lie down. Say, be still. Be still. Quit running around everywhere. Be still. Stability. Y'all heard what I'm saying? This is part of your preparation. Stability. Come on, say stability. stability. I thank the Lord for stability. You, nothing, nothing, nothing. Did you know that people who are not even saved that are successful have one thing working for them? And you would never believe how easy success is. Do you want me to tell you what it is? It's consistency. That's all they have. It's consistent. They just consistent. They will keep on getting up in the morning, doing the same thing, doing the same thing, doing the same thing, doing the same thing, doing the same thing. Doing the same thing. And eventually, consistency will pay off. So before the Lord is going to bring me into it, he's preparing me by saying, be still, stop moving around, learn to stick with something, be still. Quit starting this, stop this, oh, what's she going to school, let me go back to school. How many degrees you need? Pick something and do it. We've turned degree into the career. Stop getting all these degrees. Get, oh, uh, get running up all this loan debt. And you about 35. So they about to snatch your taxes and got to pay it back. You do know you're going to pay it back. If you went to school, go to school for what you went to school. That's one thing. You just talk about pet peeve of mine. But we have people try to do it all the time. Go to school for nursing, then won't do her. <laughs> you just got a degree. What is wrong to do it? Consist takes me consistent. Now, how many of y'all know if they say consistent over what they, over what they started with, they will be successful? Amen. That's what we tell my daughter. My daughter's be 25 when tomorrow. Uh, she's, it's my oldest daughter. Um, she just moved to Costa Rica in last year, this year, last year. And all throughout her life, we told her, be stable. I told her in middle school. I, I, pray, I was praying one day. The Lord showed me, because I believe you got to get a vision for your child. That's why my children's names are what they are. I don't name them anything. I ain't going to name them all kinds of stuff just to make up something. I want it to mean something. So I began to pray over her. The Lord said she's going to be a teacher. Now, I didn't tell her when I, I didn't, I wasn't like, don't be trying to make your child no profit. I didn't say that. I didn't tell her nothing. I just, I just, I just noted it, you know. All of a sudden, she started having this wanting to, this longing to, to teach. Very intelligent, wanting to do it. All of a sudden, she got into Spanish. When she got into Spanish, I said, she's going to be overseas. She wasn't numbered in the seventh grade. I said, she's going to be overseas. I started preparing my heart because I knew she's going to have to go. We guided her. And then she came in at high school. She wanted to go do something else. No. Stick with what, stick with what you're doing. Amen. She wanted to change her major. You know how people do, won't do this, go. No, no. Amen. My job as a parent was to keep her focused. Amen. Make her be still. Amen. Not let her get in her emotions because what she could do. What she was doing gets difficult. You know, when it gets difficult, all of a sudden we won't change. I said, you stick with it. So me and her mother held her to it. All of a sudden, she, grad she, she finally uh, uh, graduated high school, going, went on into college. And her last year of high school, she had to go down to Costa Rica uh, for a, uh, like, to finish a course. And she fell in love with it. And right now, she's got two jobs down there and just thriving. She's a Spanish, she's teaching them teaching Spanish. She's a, she's a Spanish major. And she's doing so well. I mean, I'm so shocked. I'm just shocked that, because I, you know, you never think your child live overseas, you know. But she lives overseas and she's doing well. Now, if we didn't raise her right, she'd be acting a fool. She wouldn't know what consistency was. She'd be calling us for some money all the time. But, 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 but you gotta understand, we held her to it. And that's why you got to know yourself. If I'm not disciplined, I need somebody to hold me to something. Amen. Somebody hold me to, to, you know, help me keep my word on this. Help me if I start it. That's why y'all parents are so needful. Do you understand your job is not to agree with kids? Your job is to, to, is to hold them to it because you're teaching them discipline. Amen. We don't agree with you. Children have no say, really, for real. Amen. No say. What do you mean you want, what you, what you, what you want, want something else to eat? What do you mean? Well, ain't nothing else to eat. This is it. <laughs> this is it. You don't eat this, you gonna eat sleep, but this, you ain't getting nothing else. That's, that stops all that. Me and my wife had a commercial daycare years ago. Years ago, we had a commercial daycare, and you know the kids would come in, and the parents would be like, "Well, they don't like this, and they don't eat this, and they don't eat that." And I said, "Look, we should say, look, look, honey, we don't do all that extra cooking. They gonna eat this. Watch." 
sit that child down, they might pick in it the first day. You just pick in it. Pick in it. The next day, they realize ain't no nuggets, ain't no McDonald's, ain't no fries. They ate it. The mama come in, I didn't know they even like it. Because there's no op children don't have options. Are y'all there? Say lie down. Lie down. Say stability. stability. He lead me beside still waters. Y'all there? Now, verse 3. He restoreth. Say restoreth. Restore. That means he gives me my true identity. Who am I really? Because it's not good to be going towards something and you're not sure that's what you're supposed to be going toward. One of the worst things is to wake up one day and realize you put 10 years into something that wasn't even your calling. Part of your problem is that you're probably doing something you might not be called to do. That's why you keep switching all the time. Because when you are in your calling, there's a comfort. Matter of fact, it's something called the grace stream. It's a flow. You just, it's, it's a flow. You just feel it. You're walking in it. As a matter of fact, when you get in your calling, it just moves. You're moving. Without, it's like a wave is moving you. Doors open when they should. Doors close when they should. You ain't doing nothing but just moving with the Lord. That's what grace is. Grace is this favor. That means I'm just riding the wave of God's favor. Why? He's favoring me because I'm in, a, I'm, I'm in my place. When you're out of your place, it's hard. When you're out of your place, you're always looking over at what they're doing. The Bible says comparing yourself to others, you're not wise. So when you see this girl do something, well, well she's working for her. Well, that don't mean that's what you're supposed to do. Who told you? You can't do her. Who told you you're supposed to do her? Because it's, it's the thing to do. It's, 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 it's the cute thing to do. So you're doing, what you, what's, what you're doing what's common because you can, when in reality, a true vision from the Lord is going to take faith. If you really can do what he's calling you to do, then it's probably you. But if it's going to make you depend on God, then it's God. Are y'all there? So what is what are you doing that takes God faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if you can do it in your own ability, then do it. Say, he restored me. He leading me in paths of righteousness for his name. Say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, he going to deal with my worst enemy. Say, fear. fear. Fear is the, fear is the, the toothless lion. Standing in front of the door of my destiny. I don't know the lion ain't got no teeth. Because I'm so scared of the lion, I'm frozen. That's what fear does. Fear, it freezes you. And many of us are frozen because by fear, and it stops us from going through the door. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to deal with fear. Now, part of the reason why you have so much fear is because you listen to fearful things. You listen to fear. That's why when people start talking that negative, I get away from them. I don't want to hear it. One thing I've learned, I don't want to hear it. Whatever you, whatever you meditate on, you will become. I don't listen to people talking about death. I don't listen to people talking about sickness. I don't listen. To, I don't listen. I don't mean I don't. If somebody asks me for prayer, I, I, I can hear what you're saying, but I don't sit up and meditate on all that stuff. You know, I got relatives. You go over, you say, "How you doing?" My neck hurt. My back. My leg. My back. My, my, my throat. My spine is crooked. You know. By the time you come out of there, you feel bad. All of a sudden, you. <laughs> look, look, look. You walked out limping. You ain't nothing wrong with you. You just walk out limping. You don't know why am I limping. Because you don't been in here with this handicap stuff. They done handicapped you. I don't want to hear all that. I say, okay, you know, I know, and then, then I'll come to pray for you. Put your knees out. I'll pray for you. Let me hear, help you. God, heal your knees. I'm going to go on out of here, but I ain't going to stay here and hear all that. Because I have to, because in order to keep doing what I'm doing, in order to make it in this last hour, you got to have a, you got to, you got to have a atmosphere of faith. You got to surround yourself with like-minded people. You got to surround yourself with the type of teaching and the type of fellowship, friends, that will pull you. When your faith get weak, they will pull you through. Say amen. Thank God for a friend. No, you ain't hearing what I'm saying. You don't have many. If you got one in life, you did good. I'm talking about a real friend. I'm talking about not the friend that agreed, but the friend that said, girl, come stop all that. Come on out of there. This pity party. I don't want to hear that stuff. Get up. 
Let's go. Notice Jesus was, see, Jesus, Jesus was the greatest friend there was because he never allowed your, a person's circumstance to stop them from being who they could be. Amen. When he saw the man laying at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years, what you, man, get up. That's all he said. Take up your bed. Amen. The man got indignant. Man, I, what you mean? Man, I done been there. I ain't got nobody put me in the water. And, and the man, what you do? Pity. Jesus didn't ever let pity stop him. Get up. That's a real friend. Real friend ain't going to let you stay down. Thank God for one. If you got one, you did good. Are y'all there? Can we keep going? Let me. Okay, let me get on. Look at this. Y'all ready? No matter how great a person is in life, let me give you a secret. The key to achievement. Now, 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 now everybody want to achieve. Let's stop being too deep. Let's not be too spiritual. All I want is go to heaven and Jesus, and I want Jesus all the time. Come on, man. You want, you want something in life. He put you here. You, if you made like your daddy, he, your daddy's a creator. He put a, he said that every man has, has treasure in this earthen vessel. You have a gifts and talents that he put in you. These gifts and talents is what motivates you to want to create. Everybody wants to create. And everybody wants their creation to be successful. So stop saying, you, I, just don't want, I don't know, just going through life. Just going, no, you have a create. The reason why you're not where you need to be is because you have not realized the gifting in you. You don't know what you got. You sitting there, you sitting there downplaying what you got. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People can sow. I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just old him, just seems to just. Say, what you mean? What you? I be, I see treasure in so many things that people overlook. Have you ever looked at somebody and said, "Boy, I wish I could do that," and they seem to have such a low self-esteem in that area. They don't even know what's good. Do you know why? We are very easy. It's very easy to spot treasure in others and hard to see it in ourselves, because we don't have, we don't have the voices speaking when we look at others. But when we look at ourselves, that's when we hear these, what we can't do and what we can't be and what we, who we're not. And that's a rob, say fear. fear. That's robbing me of my creativity. You say, say I'm creative. Let's say I'm creative. Did you know that God has given every man a measure so you could profit in this life? God wants you, it ain't talking about just money. It's talking about profit with relationships. You are gifted to profit in relationships. People like to talk to you. People want to be around you. That is a gift and that is a calling. Are y'all there or not there? Stop thinking all the gifts are microphone gifts. All the gifts are up front. All the gifts are singing. That's not. You got your own thing. See, I got my own thing. You will never be, you will never be happy or truly with joy till you tap into your own thing. That's why I tell people all the time, I can do many things. I mean, I was gifted at a lot of things. But there's only one thing that makes me joyful. Only one thing that I could do in my sleep that I, that I, that I don't have to take. I do it for free. That's when you know you're gifted. You'll do it for free. It's just what you do. You're born to do it. You come out doing it. That's your gifting. You have to invest in it because nobody else will invest in what you will not invest in yourself. You can never get me to invest in, a, in, in any project when a person ain't put up no money themselves. Don't come to me talking about, man, I got this great idea. How much have you put up? Because it's not real until you invest in it. Nobody's going to quit waiting for somebody to come and validate you. Wait for somebody to come tell you what you got. Don't you know what you got? How long you been saved? Don't you know what you got? You got it. Now, the reason why they don't know you got it is because you ain't invested in it. You just been talking about a good business plan, but you ain't putting no money on no, what, 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 where your faith's supposed to be. Amen. Say amen. Because if you believe you can do what you say you can do, the first test of a true believer is they'll put money behind it. If I believe I'm a carpenter, the, the next day I'll go back carpenter tools. I will not go telling you I'm a carpenter with no tools. You walk on the job, tell somebody you're a carpenter, he's going to ask you, where are your tools? So, if, so when you begin, this say, Prince, it's our preparation. When you begin to want to, to, to wanna walk in your gift, every day you ought to do something towards it. 
every day. Quit talking it. You talk too much. Did you know one of the reasons? One, did you know one of the main reasons of hindrance is why people don't never get nothing to come to pass is because they talk about it first. They telling the wrong folk first. You don't know how much negative energy can go out just through jealousy when you tell people what you want to do. Have you? Now I'm gonna keep it real. Have you ever been? Now this, if some of y'all can attest to this, have you ever was wanting to do something and every time you said something it didn't work out, but when you shut your mouth. It seems seem like it just works. You got to understand the right hand, left hand. Don't let your right hand know it's your left hand. Don't, don't always, everybody don't need to know what you're doing. Sometimes you just need to walk in it. Say amen. amen. Do you know why we tell everybody? Because we're trying to get them to invest. Instead of us investing ourselves. I don't need you to invest in me. I, I know what to do. Come on, talk to me. I'm trying to show you, if you're really pregnant with something, I can't even help people that ain't pregnant with nothing. If you don't want nothing, then you just keep going to church and go to heaven. But if you, if you say it's something in me, and I, I see something, and I've been seeing it for years, and I don't know how to get it out, I'm trying to help you get it out. You're going to have to invest in yourself. Say invest in myself. Quit buying hundreds of dollars of clothes, and you won't put nothing towards your gifting. Your gifting ain't to be cute. The Bible does say beauty is a gift, but many of us ain't gifted. So stop investing in that. That ain't returning no dividends. That's sucking your money dry. And the less gifted you are, the more money it costs. So stop letting, stop eating up your money with something that ain't going to pay you back. Invest where you gifted. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Don't y'all know that's what Satan has done? Made everybody want to go out to one thing? Everybody trying to be cute. Look how many gifts are going un, un, unfulfilled because everybody want one gift. I just want to look pretty. I won't have Beyonce hair and button hips. They cutting on themselves and rearranging their nose and doing all kinds of stuff. And still can't be it. Because you're not going to be satisfied until you say what's in me. That's why you got to look at your children. Always look at what they're doing. Yeah. Some of them can draw. Don't overlook at all oh, they describing. Look at it's something. Some of them can sing. Some of them are creative. Some of them just has ways of thinking. That's what you invest in. My son, my oldest son, when he was a little bitty, I mean, I mean, he wasn't no more than what, three, two, three? He was just he would he was just taking beat on stuff. That's what he do to me. And I knew immediately. I said, because I know it was in me. I said, okay, we, we he needs some drums. We bought him drums. Said he tore the hell out of them drums. <laughs> he busted them up. <laughs> he busted them up. He beat them drums to death. But I said, just keep investing. I bought him another set. Then I said, he's, he, he, he has something beyond drums. I bought him a keyboard. He would start learning. Bought my other son a bass. I was looking for gifts. That's all I was doing, looking for gifts. Looking for gifts. When I saw it, I invested. My daughter, my younger daughter, she's very creative. She makes like jewelry and stuff. I seen it. I said, okay, this, she, I, need to, I need to just buy some stuff. So let me see what she got. See, that's how, you, that's, how you, that's how you discover the gifts in your children. But, but, but if you don't invest in them, they'll, they, they'll, they'll, they'll be discouraged. They'll give up on it. When you show interest in it, they'll want to do it. So you invest in them. That's what people should have done to you. Look how gifted we are even as a people, as black folk. But our people invest in us the least. We, are the, we invest in our children the least. You know what we do? We buy them Jordans and Playstations and all kinds of stuff that does not challenge or bring out their gifting. All it does is just give them a sense of pride. And you don't spoil them boys buying them Jordans and then they too old to work. They can't even buy Jordans so they gonna be, now they won't sell dope to get Jordans because you don't let them walk around in Jordans their whole life and they can't afford Jordans when they get 15. No, I'm gonna buy you what you can afford. I ain't buying you no Jordans. I'm gonna buy you what you can afford. What can you afford? You, you, you got, what can you afford? Now, I'm going to make it easy for you because when you turn 16 and have to get a job, you ain't going to have no Jordan money. When you have to go down there and put that paper hat on because you ain't got no skill. 
it ain't gonna be Jordan money, so let me start you out. Let me let, let, let me let me let me let me let me put some busters on you first. I'm gonna put you in something that I know you will be able to afford. So you don't get prideful and think, well, I need to sell dope to get these shoes now. That's why we're doing it. We don't be buying them kids stuff like that. They don't need it. Say investment. investment. Say I must, I must invest, invest in, my life. in my life. You must invest. Nobody will ever say you have something until you till you know it. Nobody will ever invest in you till you invest in yourself. Are you there? Let me get done. Can we go? Now, that was, say, fear. fear. That's one of the last uh, problems you're going to have to fight when it comes to preparation. Because no matter how much you have prepared your life, fear will always stop you. That's why I'm telling you, you can't wait for people's approval. You can't wait for people to tell you, yes, that's good. The Bible said the Proverbs 31 woman, man, she made her garments and sold her stuff, and she said, I know it's good. Amen. She said, I know. You ain't got to tell me my stuff is good. I know it's good. That's confidence. That's not cockiness. That's not arrogance. The Bible says cast not away your confidence. You have to be confident in what you have, not prideful, confident. Say confident. I mean, somebody, I mean, your whole life could change. Your whole economic status could change if you would get confident in what you got. Stuff you're giving away for $8 an hour. You're giving it away for $8 an hour. You could do it for yourself. The difference between employers and employees are the perspective. The employer says, I can make it. The, the, the employer says, I can make it. The employee says, I can make it for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What do you have? Say, what do I got? I don't know if y'all even hearing this. I don't know if y'all even ready for this. This is, I'm, this, this, see, man, man, we are so busy wanting to shout, boy. I just, we so busy wanting to shout, we can't even hear. This is good teaching for somebody who's on the cusp for something, who's looking for something. This is real rich for you if you're looking for something. But if you, if you just want to shout, there's some tapes on YouTube that you can find. I'm not going to bring, I'm not going to even come our way to Chicago to make you shout. I mean, come on, man. That's, we, ain't we, have we had enough of that? I mean, I enjoy it. I like the worship, but come on. Do we always need an organ? Do I always? Eh, and, eh, and when I, and when I, uh, and I'm telling you that God said if, uh, if you, uh, if you disbelieve uh, that God will, and God, you leave out there, what did he say? I don't, I don't know what he said. That's just the theatrics and dynamics of church. The Bible said the truth shall make me free. Tell me the truth. Leave off all the theatrics and just tell me the truth. That's the reason why I refuse to preach that way. It ain't that I couldn't, man, I could preach that way. I'll probably be all over the country preaching that way because church folks love that. But they don't grow off that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People grow when you make them think. Not when you emotionalize them. When you make them think. See, somebody's thinking, I can do that. Amen. That is God's. That was a God idea. Amen. That is my gift and a talent. Amen. I now know I do. I know I need. I don't, I'm not going to feel bad about investing in this now. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Amen. See, that's, that, to me, that's, that's better than just, oh, uh, we. Amen. <laughs> See who can do this the, the best. <laughs> You say, why? You say, you say, now I know some people do it. I know some people say, sir, but, but you know, I'm going to be honest. I've been saying a long time. I ain't never had the urge to do that. I, when I first got saved, I, wa I wanted it. I waited for it. Like, where am I at? I'm, I was wanting it, you know, because everybody else was doing it. I'm, I want to do it. I thought something wrong with me, bro. Where, where, where? Help me, help me do it. It would never happen. I don't know why, why won't this happen? I found that God ain't making me do that. The Holy Ghost ain't making me do that. Amen. You can sit there and get just as blessed. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, when I, when I first got to say it was the apostolic style church, y'all know. And, I mean, they had to get that hucklebuck every Sunday. We had to get it down. <laughs> every Sunday. If you ain't do that, you ain't, you ain't had no church. And then the thing about it, the reason why I have a problem with it is because 
if the spirit don't come, they'll make it. They try to make that happen. And you can feel this is the flesh. You ever been to choirs and they do it, the organists will do it? Just, they'll make it happen. They'll keep on doing it till they make it happen. Then all of a sudden people get worried. People start going, doing something like, wait, man, ain't the spirit right there. What is that? What is that? They on the floor, snaking on the floor. Them is spirits. So that's why I said, Lord, help us stop the dynamics of church. That's why I said, Lord, if you call me to preach, I'm just going to stand there and preach. And however it is, come out is where it's going to come out. But don't make me try to be something to titillate the emotions of people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And don't get mad if you do that. Because sometimes, no, for real, that, that's, that's a praise. I'm not saying it's not a praise. I'm just saying the Holy Ghost don't make you do it. Because you have to think about it. That's why when they do it, they got to look around. <laughs> and the girl that got the, the, the one that got her best shoes on and the best, she come down front. Why can't you do that in the back of the church? Why can't we do that in the back? Because they, they got to come down front now. You know they got to come down front. And a lot of that's flesh. Now, I ain't knocking it because some people, some people, that's part of their Christian experience and they break through that way. I, I ain't knocking dancing. I know it's real. But I ain't never had urge to. This, it, this right here is not even a holy dance. This is the Charleston. If you study it, you'll find out it's the Charleston. Now, the reason why they're doing it in holiness churches is because around the turn of the century, we had revivals back then. Big revivals at, back in the 20s. Big revivals came through and totally transformed America. And when the spirit hit the people, they moved and did the dance they was doing when they was in the club. Amen. And the dance was the Charleston. Amen. And that's what that is. <laughs> Y'all ever seen those old movies? They, what they doing? They're doing it's Charleston. But because they, because they brought that from the world into the church, now, and it, it came through a move of God, they said this is a, it's a holy dance. <laughs> See, we just do stuff because it's despair. But, I, but listen, if, if, if you can break through like that, break through, baby. Break through any way you can break through. I ain't knocking you breaking through. But just let it be God. Amen. Amen. People get mad at me. They be mad at me now. He's he talking about my praise. <laughs> David praised God with all his might. <laughs> you ain't, but but you ain't, you ain't, you ain't. Holy Ghost ain't making you do it. I'll never forget this. See, the reason why I know I study this stuff. I mean, been in church service. Let me. I've been in church service one time, and 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 the spirit, you know, spirit, you know, they say the spirit was moving. The spirit's moving, and just got to screaming. Ah! She got to go but you know how people get around and all that. I said, no, nah, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't God. I got enough discernment, no, that ain't God. I said it wasn't God. She's ah, and throwing bowls, you know. So, oh, God. <laughs> Holy Spirit say do things decently in order. He don't make you go out of yourself. Whenever you, the Holy Spirit does feel a person, you more in control than you've ever been. You are more aware of yourself than you've ever, if you blanking out, that ain't God. They do that in voodoo. They start blanking out as if it's voodoo. The sister got the huck doing all that and swing. All of a sudden, she ran. <laughs> Y'all gonna think I'm lying. Y'all gonna think I'm lying. I hate, I, I hate to say it because it, it's so unbelievable. <laughs> this is so unbelievable. You know, she, she ran and jumped out the window. She jumped through the glass window. She came back to church with a with a brace on and her arms bandaged up. And said, didn't the Lord move? And you know what the table went on? They said, yeah. I said, the, the, the Lord ain't telling nobody to jump through no windows. That's the theatrics of church. You got to know what is church, what is God? What is church, what is God? What is church, what is God? Are y'all there? All right, now let's go. Let me get done. Verse 5, Lord, help me get done. Are y'all there? Because I just type, I just want, if it's real, I just want to be real. I just want to be real. Because I remember going to a church one time, we was up in Washington, and I was with one of my brothers. And uh, the pastor literally made, pointed at every person one at a time, and you had to get up and dance that way. She went down the list, and I know my role was coming. I said, I don't really, I don't really dance. <laughs> now my brother was next to me, 
And I knew he knew that we don't do his bro, but he got under pressure. <laughs> Uh, I guess the president got on the brother. Everybody got the. I said, bro, I said, bro, you don't even do this at church at home. What you? And then, it, then it, you know, it, it came to me, man. And I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I was young in the Lord. I did something like a. It was like a. <laughs> it was like a Morris Day slide or something. But but I was under pressure. They, they let it put you on the prayer like, you ain't spiritual if you don't do this. And I was too young to have any backbone of my own. And the whole church, now we on one of the last rows, the whole church done did it. And I'm like, I'm, we the only one. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go against the grain. Everybody in here, I'm going to have to go against the grain. And when she said it, she said, come on, you, come on. <laughs> so I didn't know how to do it. I just, I just put my head up. <laughs> All right, let's go. Verse 5. Verse 5. Amen. Let me get done. Y'all getting anything out of this message? Please tell me you are. I hope you are. Amen. This message will bless you if you let if you receive it. All right, verse 5. So here we go. Come on, say so here we go. This is what happened after I allowed the Lord to prepare me. This is what he does. After I let, say let him. That means cooperate. I must cooperate with him. Me and God are in partnership. We're in a corporation. We're in partnership. He is the CEO. He's the president. I'm the vice president. When he gives me orders, I, I fall in line with him. We cooperate. Say cooperate. cooperate. He's invested in me. Did you know God's invested in you? Why are you here? He put you in this earth because there's an investment in you. There's something you, that, is, that needs to be done in this earth that nobody can do but you. You are the only one that can do it. How dare you think you are common? How dare you think you are, you are, you are, you are cheap and, and, and unoriginal? The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are so unique that nobody has any part of you like you. God loves you so much that he numbered hair on your head just to make sure you understood that he knew you. Amen. You got a purpose in this, in this earth. Say amen. amen. And, 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 and you have to stop looking at what we think are stars and idols and begin to say, what is it that I got? And you ain't too old. I said, you're not too old. There's people that need you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The reason why our young people are murdering each other because we too old to talk to them. We too old to risk it. We won't walk it on those streets that are at risk. They don't listen to nobody but the black woman. I said it. They don't listen to black men. They listen to black women. I'm the only one can talk to these knuckleheads. He's the only one they'll listen to. Only one they respect. They shoot men because they're mad at their daddy. But they'll listen to a black woman. And so y'all got purpose in y'all. You can stop some stuff. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you have to be willing to say, Lord, what is in me is not over. I may not have done it in the beginning of my life, but my latter end, say amen, my latter end. What do you mean you raised all your children? Honey, go adopt some more. I ain't talking about actually go adopt, bring me a house, but go get some. <laughs> you can do that if you want to, but there's a whole lot of at-risk ones you can just grab and put them under your wing. Say amen. And share all of this wealth of knowledge you've been sitting up in church getting. Share it with them. Quit trying to give me a revelation. I know God. Go to them. They are the ones that need to hear what you got to say about God. Say amen. You, every, this is the reason why. Stop shaking your head at these murders if you ain't doing nothing about it. And, and, and it ain't no I'm going to pray for them. They need boots on the ground. Where are those that say is there's not a cause? Is it not somebody that say, look, I'm going. I'm going, like Esther. If I perish, then I perish. But Lord, you got to hate this. And I got to stand. I got to stand up against this. And you go snatch some. Did you know for every one of them boys you snatch, you save a few lives. That could be the boy you save could be the boy that was going to kill your child. What do you mean? Nothing we can do. Now we've just given up on it. And we sitting in church going to heaven on a little rowboat with all this 
knowledge and wisdom. And we're not going out here. We're so busy trying to get these microphones that we won't go get a megaphone. Stand on that street corner and we're in front of them crack houses and them dope houses and begin to preach the gospel. If you perish, you perish. If you're going to heaven, what are you scared of? Oh, I felt that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get that vision. Get it. Some of y'all got that vision. You want to go. Just go. Just go. God will protect you if you go. God will protect you if you go. And if you don't, you'll be a martyr. You'll be a martyr. You get an instant ticket. But they waiting on you. Them young girls are waiting on you. We was riding through. We was riding. We was riding through town today. We seen them standing out there in front of the abortion clinic. Their people was their, the, the the abortion class was representing. They had they pro choice stuff on representing. I said, where 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 are the other choices? Where are other people at? Where are we at? I said, why why is it when it comes to we we got all this power, but when it comes to act, I said, because God's people don't know that they're called. They're called to affect the generation. You called to affect. How many young girls can you affect? Quit wanting the women's ministry. You trying to get them when they already messed up. You'll catch that later. You know why we need so much women's ministry? Because y'all messed up at that age. Go get the ones before. Before they get messed up. Everybody's a woman preacher. Why are you only a woman preacher? Who even made that up? You mean you can't say nothing to a man? You mean you can't preach to boys? You mean kids don't need you? That stuff has, that is nothing but a trick to bring division. That's why we don't have family conferences. Got all these, I don't, why we need all this different word for women? What we need is word, all this different women word for? Why y'all so special? Y'all need all this word. And if you really look at it, y'all not the ones are at risk. The men are at risk. The boys are at risk. But yet the ministry is to you. I said it. And everybody come, come to you. Pastor, lay hands on me because uh, God is calling me to work with women. Get out of my face. Where's your daughter? Where's your nieces? And your... Where's your sons? That's why we got little thugs and... That's why Chief Keith them got these boys out there because y'all too busy worrying about women. You ain't raising these sons. So women's ministry wasn't nothing but a trick to divide the body of Christ and make you think there's a special word over here. No special word. Now, you don't have no woman's ministry. I'm tired of that. You ain't got no woman's ministry. You go and minister to whosoever will. Whoever God put in front of you. You mean you mean tell me out of all these gifts in the body, nobody, nobody's called to preach to old folk. Old folk over in the old folks' home just wishing somebody come visit me. Ooh, I wish somebody come pray. You know, old people love prayer. Come on, pray for me. Nobody go to the old folks' home and pray. You know why? Because I can't get no attention and no money out of that. But if I tell women I got a word for you, they'll travel far and wide. And that's what these harlots and these wolves have figured that out. These are the sort to creep in the house of silly women laden with sin. That's why the ministry is focused on women because they know women pay. One thing about women is y'all pay. Y'all pay for everything. And these brothers done flipped it on y'all and got y'all paying. And y'all used to paying. And brothers are sitting back playing PlayStation. And y'all paying. Getting his hair and his tattoos done. And paying his child support. You know why? Because you're trying to learn only from women. And women only going to have one perspective. You need the whole word. Talk to me. And so, who's waiting on you? What about the girl next door? The little girl that you see all the time. Now you look like, oh, she's just so hot. She's going to be pregnant for the 16th. What you going to do about it? Well, you know, if I say something to her, her mama go, please. Say something to her mama then. Amen. Maybe that's who you need to talk to. Amen. Say something to her mama. Amen. But stop copping out why God can't use you. Amen. Sitting in church and you don't, you don't know you got a ministry. Till the pastor give you a microphone. 
Usually by time to listen, let me let me give y'all revelation. Most pastors are are, are, pre, are self preservationists. By the time he give you a microphone, this Negro gonna be almost dead. Be almost in the grave. His son and daughter, why everybody gonna preach before you? But you know what? Why are you waiting on that anyway? Somebody wrote me. I don't know if you in here or not. I ain't trying to tell you business. But they wrote me and it made me think. They were saying that there's something going on in their church. And the, the past, the, the, they have a ministry, they have a heart for the lost and a passion for the lost. And, you know, they don't know if they can go out because they don't know if the pastor in agreement with them going out and going lost. And I said, I said, well, well, Jesus said, Go. When his souls ain't is individual, and then it dawned on me. I said, "Oh, she wants attention." I said, "Cause if you really want to go, who can stop me from walking?" Out? You say, "You say, you say, I can get you saved." If it's really about souls, souls are everywhere. But she was allowing the wait on validation. That said, "I'm called to do something." Say, "Amen." Are you called to do something? Now, are you called to do something? If you don't know, get to knowing. This is 2015. Ain't no more time left. Y'all better hear me. Work while it is day. For night is coming where no man going to work. This thing is winding up. I'm talking about winding up big time. I'm talking about I don't even know how long we're going to be able to preach the gospel. I told people you better download every video I got on YouTube because they're going to take it off her. They're going to take everything off. They are coming against Christianity like you won't believe. And we still sitting up waiting to go, waiting to go, waiting to go. Just go. We need you. Go. If his sister sitting here didn't come down to my church, I wouldn't be here. She just went. She just go. She went. And I'm here. That's what it means when you go. I don't know him. What if that stopped you? I don't know him. <laughs> he ain't going to see me. How you know? That's fair. How you know? Just do it. You never know what God may use you to do. Amen. Say prepare. prepare. What do you think all this word is for? It's for the last day. It's for the last hour when you're going to have to stand up and fight. You have to stand up and be a real soldier. So he's preparing you. He's toughening. The Bible says he toughens us through adversity. He strengthens us with adversity. So all this hell you're going through, all these problems and suffering, it's preparing you for the big fight. Amen. For the big showdown. And the Bible says that blessed is a man who endure to the end. And my goal is to endure. Therefore, I got to get busy using some of these weapons he gave me. Because whatever you don't use, you will lose it. And I'm not going to go through these trials and get the knots and don't get the blessing. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I ain't going to fight and get the knot and not have the blessing. So you get the blessing when you use the weapon. Say, so use the weapon. Find the enemy. He's somewhere. Your calling is where he is. The enemy is wherever, your, wherever, 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 the, where, whatever makes you mad at the devil is where, is where your calling is. If you think about prison and you get mad at the enemy because you see what them boys in prison and see what they're doing there, there's, go there. Come on, I just gave you, I'm trying to give it, I'm giving you understanding. If you see children, Children that are not being taken care of properly, and you, and you get indignant about it, your calling is there. Wherever righteous anger comes upon you, that's where you're called to. Oh, y'all didn't catch what I'm trying to tell y'all. If you can look at young girls out there at risk, and, and this something come on you, you get angry about it, that's where your calling is. You ain't never be anointed nowhere else until you, do, until you answer that call. If you can look at young men, and you can see them hanging out on the corner, you say, I just, it just makes me mad they out there like that. There you go. That's your calling. Move towards it. You might not go gung ho, but grab one. Come here, partner. Let me holler at you. Be smart of Bible said, when we're so wide. Be smart. If you go to the old folks' home and you see, you have a their heart, these seniors in here, you know, got bad so people ain't treating them right. You got a heart. There's your calling. Your calling is wherever righteous anger comes upon you. Did y'all hear what I said? I said your calling is wherever righteous anger comes upon you. When, you, when, 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 when righteous anger hits you, that means this is where I need to be. And then you begin to preach like you have lost your mind. Don't worry about microphone. Don't, talk, don't worry about whether I speak well. It don't matter because when you're where you're supposed to be, the audience will already have been primed. 
when you where you supposed to be, them people will already be primed for you. Say for me. Because nobody can do what I'm here to do. The people I'm called to reach will hear me. Say amen. So stop waiting on validation because I'm very afraid that this thing going to wind up and all of these people going to sit there and say, but Lord, I didn't get to do what you wanted me to do. Lord, and Lord, say every day you had an opportunity, but you were looking for a man. You're looking for validation, waiting on your family to get behind you, waiting on somebody to help you, waiting on somebody to give you something. I've learned as a preacher, when I first started my church, that nobody helped me at all. People never help you till you made it. Trust me. Nobody going to ever come till you made it. All of a sudden, when you start making it, Negroes come out of the woodwork. Talking about, I knew you was going to make it, bro. And I'm with you now, Doc. Yeah, you, where was you at then? They wasn't with you. You know why they ain't there in the beginning? Because of the beginning, and it's gonna, you're going to be needed. And it's going to take a lot. And they ain't trying to invest in you. So what you got to learn to do is invest in yourself. Say, invest in myself. Somebody needs me. Say, somebody need me. Somebody. Come on, do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying to charge you to get busy to do something for God before it's too late. Yeah. Only what you do for Christ yeah. will last. Yeah. And as much as I enjoy the secular stuff that people do to make money or whatever, shoot, that, that stuff going to burn up and pass away. Yeah. Only what I do for Christ. Verse 5, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's when thou anointest my head with oil. You have prepared me. Now I can eat. Say amen. amen. But remember the table has to be around your enemies. You ain't going to never eat without enemies. This is the reason why God has to toughen you. In case you can't be looking for validation. Because even when he bring the table, you're going to have to eat it. In the presence of folks hating on you. In the presence of folks who said you would never get it. In the presence of folks jealous of you, mad at you, and wish you choked. While you swallowing the food, they say, I hope you choke. That's why you got to be tough. Well, when you get your table, you sit down. I mean, just don't you sit down at night. Just <laughs> eat it. Eat it like a boss. Look at what you went through to get there. Eat it like a boss. You ain't going to make them love you. Your job ain't to change the mind of people that don't like you. Your job ain't to change the mind of haters. Your job is to obey God. Let him bless you. Then sit down in front of them haters and eat like a boss. To testify of God's goodness. All you did to stop. All you did. And I'm still got the table. I'm still here. And you don't even know all your little silly stuff you was doing was preparation. Preparation for me to eat. Say amen. Now this oil of this anointing begins to flow in my life. Say amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's why I don't, I don't, I never pay no mind to people who hate no, you don't have to, nah, 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 nah. never pay no mind. Because God's going to feed you in front of them. Say, feed me in front of my enemies. I learned that years ago. You can't even eat unless you got them. I'm trying to be nice to everybody until I realize, shoot, they're going to hate me when I get it. They're going to hate me when I don't. So I might as well be me. If you're going to hate me anyway, be me. Because you're going to have to, listen, I said, God, why would you give me a table in front of these cats that don't like us? Why would you do that? And Lord said, do you understand the joy of triumph? Do you know how, how joyful it is for your enemy to know you beat them? He said, that's why you got to have them right there. Because they need to know. He said, that's what I did to the enemy. He said, when, he said, when I went down into the, into the earth and spoiled Satan, he said, I, he said, I put him, my foot on his neck and spoiled him, paraded him, you know, paraded him like he wasn't nothing. I had to do it. In front, and then, and then he said, now God was giving me my table. My father was giving me a table. This is my table where I'm spoiling my enemy. But I had to do it. I, I had to eat it in front of all. The whole hell was watching while I was chowing down. So stop worrying about them cats. Begin to say, Lord, where is the place that you will prepare this table for me? And that's why I said the message is sort of prophetic, but it won't help you if you ain't looking for nothing. But if you saying, Lord, my better day, but I got better days coming, and I'm not going to let the suffering and the heartache and the headache of my past rob me from me walking into my purpose. So I just have to declare, be healed. 
from all of the garbage. Be healed from what they said. Be healed from what they did. Be healed from who with me. Be healed from who left. I love my child. Yo, your child might have broke your heart, but at some day you're going to have to say, I'll be healed over this. Be healed from the baby daddy and the baby mama. Be healed from the ex-husband and the ex-wife, the ex-boyfriend and the ex-girlfriend, the ex-pastor and his wife too. Just be healed. Because I ain't got time to waste more time outside of my destiny waiting on somebody to come and tell me, now you can eat. Amen. You ain't got to tell me to eat. Once the table is prepared, I'm sitting down. Amen. Come on, say, sit down. Amen. Sit down and eat it. Amen. Waiting on somebody to tell you to go. You ain't got to tell a hungry man to eat. You know how long I waited for this table? How long I waited for to eat this? All the hell I went through all these years of being saved, walking, denying myself, fighting tooth and nail, trying to hold on to the, the little piece of God I had. I'm talking about the holding on to revelation just like, you know, like it was the last revelation in the world just so I could walk with God, trying to find light in everything, looking for light on every revelation. For running over here, running over here, books, tapes, DVDs, YouTube, wherever I can get it, Facebook, tape, t texting the word, trying to find the revelation. And now I'm at the point where I'm about ready to eat and you think I'm going to wait on you? The devil is a lie. I said, sit down. Sit down and eat. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. 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 I told you it's prophetic for some. For some it means nothing because you ain't looking for nothing. You can't help people that don't want nothing. But when people are pregnant with something, people are saying, I got more in me. I'm not ready to die yet. I'm not just trying to go to heaven. I want to I do something for God. He put me here to do something. The greatest depression is to know you had all this in you and you didn't do nothing with it. How gifted are you? How skilled are you? And you're not doing nothing with it. It's time to launch whatever you got. What, say whatever I got. Play. Whatever you got, launch it. Don't wait on people to validate it. It's 2015. There ain't no more time left. I wish it was 30 years ago. You think I wouldn't like to try to build this ministry to, the, to its full potential? I said, Lord, I'm, I already know. This, is, this thing going to wind up. They're going to stop us from preaching free like we preach it. We gonna to, it's going to be stopped where we can't. We're we going to have persecution now to preach. That's why I was telling people, they were arguing me about these YouTube videos. I said, man, you better download them because every video going to be taken off of there. What do you think this homosexual movement is? They silencing Christians right and left. Everybody else can speak but us. And so if whatever you're going to do for the Lord, you better do it. That's where your crowns are going to come from, honey. That's where your rewards are going to come from. Yeah, I want to go to heaven, but the Bible talks about there's rewards, baby. There's crowns that you're going to get. And the Bible says, don't let nobody steal your crown. Somebody go, I don't want to step up and do what I'm supposed to do. It's time for me to do it. I'm going to say do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. I'm going to prophetically commission you tonight. If you receive it, I'm going to prophetically commission you tonight. And after tonight, doors of favor concerning your calling will open. Concerning your gifting will open. Nothing selfish, no selfish motive here. Only what concerns your calling will open for you because now you are going to be serious about it you know God has already said you can do it it's time to get it done and those that don't know what they're called to do I believe prophetically today God's going to give you a glimpse if you ain't already seen it you probably already seen it while I was talking you probably already know what it is you might be even doing it you just don't know that's it but purpose is the only thing that makes life fulfilling you can get all the money in the world ask millionaires all the money in the world, if you don't have purpose, you still feel bad. You still feel depressed. Where kill yourself, suicide yourself, because you just don't know why you was put on this earth. That stops tonight. God's going to prepare a table for you. Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you. You've challenged us. You've, you, you've, you've caused us to ask you for the purpose and the plan and the destiny. We know we're pregnant with something and you ain't brought us this far for us to be nobody. You have something for me and I want it now. I desire it. I used to be scared to say I wanted it, but now I'm saying I want it. I want it. 
I want all you have for me. I'm tired of waiting on somebody to tell me when I can have it and when I can get it and when I can go. I'm just going to walk in it from today. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as your people receive, let doors, fresh doors of destiny and purpose open up. Open in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are supposed to start businesses, let doors of business open. Those that need to connect with our youth, let it open up. Every gift, stir up like you stirred up Timothy's gift, God. Father, cause them to reach potential. In Jesus' name. Now, receive this importation. You ready? Come on, you ready? You, you, this is what you came for. It wasn't just to hear the word. It's also to receive an importation. It's late and I don't have enough time to get to everybody one-on-one. -on -one, so you can receive it where you are. Just like the centurion soldier said, all you got to do is send the word. Say amen. Bible said he sent his word and it healed them. I believe if you receive his word with faith, these doors are going to open for you. And then you write, you write our ministry or email us and let us know what happened in your life after the day. Because I'm telling you, I'm not just speaking this. I mean, I don't have to. I got a church. I can go preach to them. I ain't got to hype nobody up. I don't do that. When I say I believe something, I believe it. I'm saying it because I believe it. And I believe God's going to do it. He didn't send me all the way up here for nothing. And I showed him pack my family up on the coldest day of ever to come here. So if I'm here, it's because there was purpose and there was destiny. And that's why you are here. And that's why you, you don't know why you came. This is why you came. See, a lot of times you don't know. You know, you, you, know, you pressed your way. And you're here. And you're in on something. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want y'all to repeat it after me. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Every door of destiny laid before me. Open. 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 Every demon around the door. Be removed. Be removed. Be removed. Lord God, anoint my hands that whatever I touch is blessed. Whatever I do is blessed. Anoint my feet. Wherever I walk is blessed. I walk into my vineyard, my field, my sphere of opportunity. I walk into it tonight. I declare ministry open up for me business open up for me destiny open up for me I receive it this year this year this year this year this year I will be what God has purposed me to be I've endured the preparation now I wait my table my table my table get a lot some praise for that hallelujah i'm waiting for my table my table my table's coming my table's coming my table hallelujah 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 Ooh, hallelujah I wait my table if you wanted the word that's it for you right there now remember expected faith always receives so that means I'm looking for, for this thing to, from this day forward I'm looking for it I understand it's in the presence of enemies so don't get discouraged when you see enemies because maybe that's your table coming that's why you can't be always worried about haters because sometimes haters bring the food Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you guys to write.